Ready? Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to get started with our Bible study on tonight. Amen. We welcome everybody uh, to the house of the Lord, our Facebook and our YouTube family. We welcome you uh, to our Tuesday night Bible study here at Revelation Ministries. Let us go into the in a word of prayer before we get started in the word of God. Real quick, bowed heads all over the building. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, and praise you, God, for this privilege opportunity, Father God, for us to be in your presence, to be in the house of God. And Lord, we don't take anything for granted, Lord. We want to just enter in with the right attitude of gratitude, knowing, God, that it was you that woke us up this morning. It was you that gave us the breath of life. It was you, God, that provided for us, Father, all our daily bread on today. So, God, we thank you, Lord. It was you that gave us grace and a renewed mercy, Father God, on today that we can work out our salvation. So, God, we thank you on today, God. And we do not take this opportunity religiously, Father God. We are grateful. We are grateful for all that you have done for us. You are, we are grateful that you saved us. You are, we are grateful, Father God, that you gave us a mind, Father God, to seek after you, Father, to be involved in the things of the kingdom, God. And we just give you all the praise, all the credit, all the adoration, all the glory, because there is none like you. Father, forgive us for all of our sins, God. Wash us with your blood, God. Cleanse us, Lord, from all unrighteousness. Father, creating us a clean heart, Lord, and renew a right spirit. If there's anything, anything we may have said, done, thought about God that was outside of your will, we take this opportunity, Father God, to repent. And you said in your word that if we confess our faults, that you will be faithful and just to forgive us, and you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we present these bodies on the altar as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. So God, we thank you and we praise you right now in the name of Jesus. So God, we ask you right now to lead us on today in our Bible study. Holy Spirit, release your spirit of wisdom and revelation, Father, as we prepare to go into your word. Guide us by the Spirit. Guide us into the deep, deep things of God. Open up your word, Father God. Let your logos become ramos. Let it become revelatory. Let it become alive, God. And let us all be edified, God, and you be glorified. I bind all principalities that will come and try and distract, disturb, <coughs> or disrupt. Hallelujah. Our worship experience on tonight, bind any spirits of infirmity that will try and come against our body, God. Even bless those that are streaming online. God, we pray for a, a clear pathway, Father God, for the message to go through the airwaves without any disruptions, Father God. We thank you and we praise you right now for what you're getting ready to do. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Begin to manifest. Begin to activate your gifts. Begin, hallelujah, to make an endowment, hallelujah, upon us by the Spirit. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, look, I want to, first of all, before we get started on tonight, I want to welcome everybody again uh, to our Tuesday night Bible study. I want to start off uh, just with a couple quick announcements. Um, first of all, I want to thank God for Missionary Coleman uh, being in the house of God uh, on tonight. Uh, those of us that are here at Revelation Ministries family, uh, we know on last week we had to cancel our service because we had an emergency phone call that she was in an accident. And uh, from, the, from the initial call, it sounded serious. It was kind of serious. But thank God, to God be the glory, she's in the house of God on today. So we thank God, amen, that God spared her. Hallelujah. And it, because that's how fast our lives can change, just like that. So we got to give God the glory, the praise, and the honor uh, that she's here in the house of God on tonight. Amen. On this week, on this Thursday, we're going to kind of make a shift in our Thursday service. So I need everybody just to kind of flow with me and just kind of be obedient. Our Thursday night service is going to be moved to Friday night, just this week, on Friday night, Friday night. Somebody online just type Friday night. Uh, so we'll still have our continual prayer on Thursday, but our service will be Friday night. Amen. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me or First Lady, but please don't come on Thursday night. Be here on Friday at 7 o'clock. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let us go to the Word of God. I'm, I'm kind of excited. Uh, the Holy Spirit kind of released me to build on the word that uh, uh, Crystal, my niece, had preached on Sunday uh, toward the end when she began to pray uh, for the people of God, God had told me that there was an anointing to break the cycle, 
to break the cycle. And remember in that word that she was teaching on Sunday, the children of Israel had literally went around the same mountain for 38 years when they were only two days away from the promised land. Hallelujah. Because of their disobedience, because of their unbelief, because of their complaining, because of their frustration, because of them wanting to go back to Egypt, God had made a comment and said, you have tempted me these 10 times, and now go around this mountain. And he literally allowed them to circle around this mountain year after year until that entire generation had died. And while, that, while they were going around that mountain for 38 years, while one generation died, a new generation was being born. And that was the new generation that, that was in the book of Deuteronomy, praise God, which was the actual generation that crossed over Jericho into the promised land. Amen? Praise God. So I want to kind of deal with what God had did through the Holy Spirit on Sunday concerning breaking the cycle, breaking the cycle. And, and, you know, because a lot of times what happened is when God moves by his spirit, when he does something spiritually, when he does something supernaturally, and especially uh, the way God had moved on Sunday where it was kind of outside of our norm, there wasn't no organ, there wasn't no shouting, there wasn't nobody falling out on the altar, there wasn't no tears, but, but God had brought a spirit of just peace and calm while he used the woman of God to minister to the people of God. But in her ministry, in her anointing, was the anointing to break the cycle. So what happens is, once God does something spiritually, if you don't have a human understanding of what has been done, you will mentally go back, you will mentally default to the same things you used to do, not knowing that God has broke something or did something supernaturally in your life, okay? So today, I want to kind of talk about some practical things. This is going to be a practical teaching, and we'll get back to the book of Acts on next week. So we're just kind of taking a detour real quick by the Holy Ghost uh, in this topic of concerning breaking that cycle, breaking that cycle. I want us to start off with our first scripture tonight in Proverbs 23 and 7. Uh, it's a scripture that we quote very often uh, in Revelation Ministries uh, because it actually is the center. It is actually is the key to everything that we accomplish in the spirit and in the natural. Uh, Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he thinketh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, okay? And I'm just going to stick with that A clause of Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I told you that word ETH, whenever you see the word ETH in the King James Version, that actually means I-N-G. So the scripture is actually saying, as a man is thinking, as a man is thinking, that continual thought pattern in his heart, and remember the heart is not talking about the blood pump in the Bible. The heart is a metaphor of the mind. So as a man is thinking in his mind, so is he. Okay? That, 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 this is one of the most powerful scriptures in the Word of God in Proverbs 23 and 7 because it governs everything that we are everything that we accomplish, everything that we do. And some of us, in, in a natural sense, and we're talking practical, so we're going to be jumping back from the practical to the spiritual uh, in, in today's lesson. But, but all of us can, under, can really admit that I should be further along than where I am because I know what is inside of me. I know what God has put in me. I know what I'm capable of doing. But the reason I have not produced what is in me is simply how I've been thinking, how I've been thinking. So as a man is thinking, thinking, so is he. And, and, and I want to pause and say lie right there because you have to examine what have I been thinking about? What have I been thinking about? So we're talking about this cycle, this, this cycle of, of, of going around the mountain, 
not accomplishing, not just going around the same old thing, the same old drama, the same old position, the same old financial position, the same spiritual position, the same natural position, year after year after year, and you have not seen the, the progressive growth in your life that you know, hallelujah, that you're capable of and you know where God has called you to, and the reason that has not manifested in your life is simply what you've been thinking. What you've been thinking. Now, now the reason I'm kind of slowing down on this one text is because this right here is also the essence of our warfare. Because not only God who wrote this principle, who wrote the word of God, who wrote the word, wrote the word of God and put it on paper for us to, to be governed by, also the enemy knows this principle. So, so now we can kind of tap into the essence of our warfare, why the enemy, why I'm always getting negative thoughts, why I'm always being bombarded with, with, with ungodly thoughts, why am I always thinking this way, why am I always discouraged, why am I always down, why am I always this, why am I, and, and, and those of us that have been really called to, to high levels, not only in the spirit, but called to uh, uh, deeper things even in the natural or higher things in the natural, you can honestly admit you have been bombarded with mental war fair to slow you down, to discourage you, to stop you. And, and so, so this right here is the essence of why we keep going around the same old thing. And, and, and sometimes, you know, you, you, you can't blame everything on the devil uh, because sometimes we kind of get programmed in just this is how I think. And we get used to thinking negative. We get used uh, to, to thinking discouraged. We, we get used, hallelujah, to, um, uh, you know, to being critical and, and not necessarily walking in faith. Or th Because in order to walk in faith, you got to think in faith. Oh, come on now. In order to walk in faith, you have to think in faith. Because as a man is thinking, so is he. So, so if I want to become a doctor, I first got to think that I can be a doctor before I can actually start making steps into becoming a doctor. Or if I'm going to be a millionaire or if I'm going, hallelujah, be this, this great entrepreneur, I first got to think, glory to God, like an entrepreneur. I got to think, hallelujah, that I can make it or I can be that or I got to see myself doing that. So my thoughts, glory to God, have to line up to where I'm going. That this is it. That this is it. It's, it's, in, it's in how you have been thinking. And so now you, you can start kind of see whenever you start thinking positive, here comes what? Negative. Whenever you start believing, here come, here come negative. You too old. You waited too late. You too this. You too that. You don't feel like it. You too this. All these negative things that kind of keep you in a stalemate of going around the mountain. Year after year. Dying and, and, and not fully reaching your potential. And, and I think, you know, because see, the, the, enemy, the enemy knows because we're in Christ, those of us that are saved and really living saved, the enemy knows he can't have our soul. Our soul is going to live forever with Jesus Christ. But what he says is, at least let me render them weak. Let me render them powerless. Let me render them ineffective while they are here on the earth. Let's not let them reach their full potential because, hallelujah, let's keep them down here in the valley so therefore they won't reach their real potential, real, their, their full potential and start preaching the gospel in these high places that they're called to. Let me keep them mediocre. Let me, let me, let me keep them complacent. Let me keep them comfortable. Woo, glory to God. And, and so you, you kind of see the, the essence of all of our warfare is simply in how we've been thinking. So, so you have to ask yourself, what, am, what, what have I been thinking about? Because it's not just one thought, it's a continual thought. As a man is thinking it's, it's thinking, so is he. 
and, and no, this thoughts are not something that you cannot govern. I, I can control what I think about. So in other words, a thought can come, but I don't have to think on that thought. You see what I'm saying? Just because a thought comes don't mean I got to think on that thought. So if I'm thinking on a thought, that's by my conscious act of my will. I'm choosing to think or to meditate or to ponder on a thought that came to me. And while I'm thinking, while I'm pondering, that's on me. Now, we can admit that the devil can give you a thought, but it's up to you to think on that thought and to ponder on that thought. And, and so, therefore, you, you, we, we got to take ownership of, of how we've allowed our thought life to hinder us, how, how we've allowed uh, our mental capacity uh, to, to minimize who we really are. And, and the, re the reason I'm kind of compassionate uh, about this lesson on tonight, and, and, and it just really hit me uh, when Crystal was preaching about going around that mountain, and I got up and I said, I cannot die here. I cannot die in this mountain. Why? Because I know I've been called. I know there's promise. And see, when we talk about the promised land, uh, that, 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 that's not necessarily uh, reaching a, a, a million dollars or, or, you know, but there can be that kind of stuff in your promise. But reaching your, your see, your promise land ain't my promise land. Hallelujah. What, your, what, what God has spoke in you, what God has put in you, what God has deposited in you, hallelujah, what God has ordained for you to be, that's your promise land. Hallelujah. And so, here it is, the children of Israel, because of their disobedience, because of what they were thinking, what they were thinking. They, they, they start murmuring and complaining, and they start thinking about their current situation. They, they, they got consumed about their current situation and start putting their mind back on where they had got delivered from, hallelujah, and end up costing them what they were being delivered to. Okay, so, so therefore, we got to really think about, man, everything that I'm not, that I know I should be, is simply because I've been thinking wrong. Is that thing? And, and, and so, therefore, how, how, do I, how do I change this thing? How, how do, I mean, and we got we to gotta have a kind of open dialogue with this on today because I really want us to do, because ain't, ain't, ain't nobody innocent in this one. <laughs> it, it, it ain't no big eyes and little use in this one. Everybody is hit with this one. Everybody is hindered uh, by their thought life. Everybody is bombarded by, by negative thinking or inferior thinking or discouraged thinking, glory to God, because that's the essence of our warfare. If you are saved, glory to God, you are having some kind of mental warfare on a day-to-day -day basis. Hallelujah. If you ain't having no mental warfare, it could be that you ain't saved, that the devil already got you. Okay, so this is something that we can address, uh, that we can kind of have a dialogue. So, you know, I kind of want to open up a few questions um, for, for as he is thinking, so is he. So is he. So in other words, our identity, our identity comes from what we've been thinking. And we know this is a principle because what did God say in Jeremiah 29 and 11? I know the what? The thoughts that I think towards you. Uh oh, wait a minute. So even God is thinking. So his, his calling or, or his, his, his um, blessings or his ordained calling that he put on our lives is in the essence of his thoughts. Because he says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. You don't know them, but I know them. And they are thoughts of what? Good and not of evil. Oh, wait a minute. So you telling me God don't even allow evil thoughts about you? God say, my thoughts are good about you. I think good about you. Even in spite of what you're doing, I still think good. Hallelujah. And he says, I do it to bring you to what? An expected end. 
Ah, so now it's coming together. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So even God, in what he thinks about us, God makes sure that when he thinks, he thinks good things because he wants us to get to an expected end. Now, why, why is it expected and not a sure thing? He, he knows the plan, but he said, I expect you to be there, but that don't mean you're going to be there. We got our own will. Well, so, so there's an expected end. There, there, there's a place that God expects us to be. There's some things that God expects us to accomplish. There's some things. And why does he expect that? Because I put it inside of you, and I know what I think of you. It's kind of like your kids. Hallelujah. You, 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 you expect certain things from your kids, don't you? Why? Because I taught you better. I know you. Uh, come on. You know better. So I expect. I put a level of expectation expectancy upon your life. Why? Because you're mine. You're mine. So what it does is, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. What it does is when you have a level of expectancy, it, 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 it actually puts a standard upon your life. I expect more from you. I expect better from you. I don't expect you to stoop down to that level. Why? Because you're mine. I taught you better. I raised you better. I think of you better. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so now we, we can see how serious thoughts are. Because even God, God said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. So God is thinking about you. Glory to God. My God. Just to think that your creator is thinking about you. In, in spite of what we're going through, God say, I still got good thoughts. Hallelujah. That, that even though I see you going through, I still think you're going to make it out. I, I still believe that you're going to make it to that expected end, that, 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 that divine place, that divine destiny, that promised land. Hallelujah. That I've promised you. I, I think good things toward you. Now, if God thinks good things toward you, shouldn't we think good things about ourselves? Huh? But that's where we fail. Because you got to ask yourself, what have I been thinking? And, and, and some of us allow our thoughts, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost, to become discouraged is a choice. Even though you say something to me, it doesn't have to affect me. If it affects me to the point that I have gotten discouraged, that means I've allowed what you said to affect me. I allowed it. You see what I'm saying? So, so therefore, uh, how we look at thoughts, glory to God, we have to take a level of ownership to what we've allowed our mind, what we've allowed to accept. Just because that thought came, or, or sometimes people will speak words that produce thoughts. Right? You see what I'm saying? You, you, you can speak a word that could cause a thought, and the next thing you know, I spend the next two days thinking about what you said, and because she said it, you know, I can't believe she said that to me. And, I, and, I'm, and you know what I'm saying? But it all started with those words, but it produced a thought, glory to God, and I kept pondering on that thought. Woo, hallelujah. So I got to take ownership. Because the Bible says, not as God thinks, but as a man, as he thinketh. As you are thinking, as you are thinking, this is your responsibility. Hallelujah. This, this is your job to govern your thoughts. Hallelujah. I, I, I use this analogy all the time. Like when we're watching TV, you know, we can't, we can't govern uh, what the networks put on TV at a certain time. We, 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 we have no decision in what CNN puts on or, or HBO puts on or, or you know, we, we have no decision in that. But we can control what we watch. We have, we have that power because I can either turn the TV off or I can change the channel. And, and that, therefore, that's why before we kind of really begin to get back in control of our lives, get back in control of our mentals, we first got to take charge. We got to take the remote back. You first got to get the revelation that, no, this is my mind. Devil, you can't have my mind, flesh, you can't have 
my mind. The old nature can't have my mind. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And we got to understand the, the level, the warfares, hallelujah, that we have that come against our mind. You, you got the old nature that offer thoughts. Uh, you, 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 that would, and in that old nature uh, can, can be familiar spirits, uh, uh, past experiences, uh, that person you used to be, uh, the way you handled that situation back in the day. All, all of that stuff come from the old man, the old nature, the carnal man. Okay, so you got the carnal man that is constantly working in your mind, and then you also have demonic warfare. Okay, so you you have these two two negative entities. Hallelujah, trying to pull against your mind, trying to offer these thoughts all day long. Come on, can, can we keep it real? The, the flesh be working all day long sometimes, don't it? Hallelujah, the devil be working all day long, glory to God. Hallelujah, so therefore, you, you have to be able to decipher uh, these thoughts and understand how to deal with them, okay? All right, so let's go a little further. Let's go to another scripture, uh, Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. And, and you know, um, these, these are very uh, scriptures that, that we know very well. Um, but it's one thing to know them and to also begin to live them. Okay? 12 and 1. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, uh, I want to stop right there in that A clause because in order for me to give my body over to the Lord as a living sacrifice, okay, that means my mind has to be made up, right? In order for me to offer myself, uh, that means my mental capacity has to be willing to present my body. So even in this text, we see the mind involved in that A clause in Romans 12 and 1. So in order for me to present my body, I got to be willing to offer it. You cannot have a sacrifice without an offering. It, it, it is not a sacrifice without an offering, and that offering has to be an offering of free will. Hallelujah. So in other words, you got to be willing to present your body as a living sacrifice, okay? So in other words, anything that's a sacrifice got to be willing to die, okay? When, and death in the Bible does not mean uh, uh, the end of life. What it's referring to or implying is separation, okay? So you got to be willing to separate. You got to be willing to separate. When you're talking about offering up your body, that means you got to be willing to separate. Separate from what? from sin, separate from that old nature, separating, hallelujah, from the world. you got to have a made-up mind to present your body. Glory to God. So what, what does it mean um, to offer up? So every time that I make a decision not to give in to the flesh, I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice. Every time I decide, hallelujah, to say I'm going to pray for you instead of cussing you out, I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice. Every time I don't give in to what the flesh wants or what the flesh will, but, but yield, hallelujah, to what God said I'm supposed to be doing, I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice. What am I doing? I'm dying to the flesh. I'm dying to the world. I'm dying to what the devil is tempting me to do. Glory to God. And every time I do that, I'm presenting my body to the Lord as a living sacrifice. Glory to God. And this is not something that you just do on Sunday morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, we come to the altar Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and you simply keep coming because what you did on Monday through Friday. But that same altar call ought to be an altar that's in your house, that's in your car, that's on your job. Glory to God. That it does, you don't have to wait Wait till Sunday to get to the altar. Every time you are tempted, every time you deny the flesh, every time you deny the enemy, you ought to make an altar in your car, in your house, hallelujah, walking down the street, walking your dog, your cat, your hamster, or whatever you got. Glory to God that I'm willing to be a sacrifice because that's who I am. Some people only want to sacrifice on Sunday. 
You, you only want to sacrifice glory to God, hallelujah, when you want to appear to be holy, when you want to appear to be a Christian, when you want to appear to be right, when you want to look a certain way, hallelujah, amongst other people. But I keep telling y'all who you are at home, that's the real you. That's the one that's getting judged. That's the one that has to stand before God. That's the one that God is sitting back, shaking his head, saying, look at here, be not deceived. I am not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you best believe you're going to reap it. Woo! Hallelujah. So, so this presentation, glory to God, of my body is something who I am. I, I am a continual living sacrifice. Woo, that, that's how you stay holy. That's how you walk holy. Hallelujah. It's, it's be willing to be a sacrifice. I'm willing to die, glory to God, to how I feel. I'm willing to die to what my flesh wants. I'm willing to die to the old nature. I'm willing to die to what the enemy is trying to do. Hallelujah. And present my body unto the Lord as a living sacrifice. And what did he say? Holy. That's the only way you're going to be holy is you got to be willing to die. <laughs> ah, glory to God. That's the only way you can honestly be holy. Some, some folks get up and testify, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and that with burning fire. But those are just empty words if you ain't died. Glory to God. If you ain't dead to the flesh, dead to sin, dead to the oil, and I mean separated. You're just saying empty words. So Paul says, Hallelujah. I beg you, I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. So this presentation has to come with a made-up mind. See, see now, now the warfare is beginning to make sense because, see, uh, the mind has to be made up to be holy. You, 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 you got to have a made-up mind to really be holy. <laughs> I'm talking about being holy for real. I'm talking about when ain't nobody looking, I'm still holy. <laughs> Hallelujah. When, 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 when I know, glory to God, I can do it and get away with it and ain't nobody going to see it, but I choose, glory to God, to die. Hallelujah. I choose, glory to God, to do what's right. I choose, glory to God, to serve, be in the will of God. Hallelujah. That's when you know you holy, when you can be a sacrifice. Ah, willing to keep my mouth closed because I'm holy. Uh, not because I'm weak, <laughs> not, not, not because, glory to God, you getting over on me. <laughs> I'm just not going to say what I want to say, glory to God, because I'm holy. Uh, I'm not going to express my frustration in that kind of way because I'm holy. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And then he says, which is your reasonable service. Glory to God. I love what the Amplified says. It says, which is your rational or your logical or your intelligent act of worship. Hallelujah. So in other words, this is something that you are doing intentionally. You are purposely, you, you are conscious, glory to God, that I am making a sacrifice. You, and, and, and you are doing it, glory to God, as a conscious act of your will. Why? Because in order to be holy, you have to think holy. You can't think holy, hallelujah, and, and, and not be holy. If you think holy, you'll be holy. Hallelujah. You can't think unholy and expect that holy action is going to come out of unholy thoughts. So it all starts with the mind. It, it's all in the mind. So therefore, hallelujah, uh, um, everything that we do is centered in our thought life. What, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Hallelujah. A am, I, am I sitting there, you know, thinking about uh, ungodly sexual things? You know, you could, you could watch pornography without turning it on on your TV or on your phone. Just let your mind go somewhere where it ain't supposed to go, and it will take you to pornographic images. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you can think uh, ungodly. You, you, you can think wicked. Hallelujah. You, you know, you, you, your, your mind will have you wanting to kill somebody, strangle them, choke them, glory to God, and hang them over the Bay Bridge. And you, you, you can see yourself doing it. Hallelujah. But your mind, yeah. So he says, which is your reason of service. And then he says, look at this, and be not conformed, be not conformed to this world. 
any longer with its superficial values and customs. You be not conformed to this world, okay? And, and within the world, it's not just talking about, uh, you know, where we live physically, but the world is also your, your, your mental, how, how you thinking. That, that carnal man lives in the world. That old man lives in the world. Even though he's still on the inside of you, he's still worldly. He's still carnal. He's still fleshly. Hallelujah. So, so, and the thing is, if you ain't walking in the spirit, you're walking in the world. <laughs> it, it's, it's just that simple. If you are in the carnal man, you are subject, glory to God, to the things of the world. And he says, be not conformed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When you are conforming to something, doesn't that mean that you are surrendering to? When, when you are conforming, you're, you're, you're compromising, you're giving in to you're changing, <laughs> and, and you know, it's, it's by default. If you are not pressing into God mentally, if you're not thinking about the things of God, if you don't govern your, govern your thoughts, by default, your mind will conform to the world. Oh, yeah, trust me, just try not coming to church for a while. Watch where your mind go. Yeah, and come on, some of us that's been saved a long time, Get out of your consistent prayer life. Watch where your mind go. Yeah. You used to pray every day for an hour, and now you done been skipping, and now you don't pray, you know what I'm saying, maybe once or twice a week. L look at where your mind is. It's all over the place. It's going to conform by default. So in other words, that lets us know the world uh, and, and the old nature and the sin nature, hallelujah, and the demonic nature is constantly pulling, and the only way you can fight against it, glory to God, is you got to put your mind on God. Hallelujah. So, so, so therefore, hallelujah, he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, changing your thoughts. You, you got to that you got to change your thoughts as a man is thinking, thinking. And, and you know, I, I was it just, man, it, it, for some reason that message hit me on Sunday. And, and I was determined. I said, man, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going through patterns no more. I'm not going to go through cycles of emotions no more. I'm not going through cycles of complacency. I know where I'm called to be. I know what God has called me to do. I know the things, glory to God, even though they're, they're big thing and they may be challenging, but it's still what I think about it, what makes it challenging. It's what I think about it, what makes it hard. If you're thinking about it, anything that's hard, it's hard because you think it's hard. <laughs> it's hard because you make it hard. We make it hard by how we think about it. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever, you, you, you had something you had to do, hallelujah, and, and, and you were hesitant on doing it, and you procrastinated, and you, it intimidated you, and you didn't want to do it, hallelujah, because you didn't know how it was going to come out, and, and you wasn't sure that you were going to be able to do it, and, and then when you finally did it, it ended up being easier than what you thought. It wasn't nothing. So all the while, you sitting up there intimidated, in fear, in frustration, and in anxiety, it was all because of your thoughts. You made it hard. Glory to God. We make our lives harder than it should be by not governing our thoughts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, be not conformed, but be ye transformed. Transformed. That, that word transformed in the, in the Greek, it means, it, it says metamufu. That's where we get the word metamorphosis, okay? That, that's kind of what uh, a butterfly or a caterpillar goes through when it becomes a butterfly. It goes through a metamufu, a metamorphosis. So, so this transform is, is a transformation that, that makes it into something permanent, okay? That's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah. And, and, you know, whatever you think about, you'll become. I mean, if I sit up here and, and let my mind think that I want to be a woman, 
and, and I keep thinking about that I'm going to be a woman, that I think I should be a woman, and that God made me to be a woman, that I could change whoever I am, and I don't want to be a he, I want to be called they, and I'm a it, and I keep thinking like that, the next thing you know, glory to God, I'm going to be in my wife's wigs, hallelujah, and I'm going to be in her makeup, and, and I'm going to be coming to church changed. Because why? I allow my mind to take me there. Okay? You are what you've been thinking. And the devil knows that, so therefore, that's why he deposits seeds, hallelujah, in your mind. He deposits seeds, hallelujah, in your thought life to make you become whatever it is that he's put in your mind. Okay? So he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, by the renovation of your mind. That's what that word renewing means, renewing. It's your thoughts. So I got I to gotta change my thoughts. I got to change how I think. Hallelujah. And, and, and not only, you know what I'm saying, what, what I think about God, because some of us, we, we think great about God. We think God is awesome and wonderful. He's magnificent. He's omnipotent. He's the all-knowing God. He's the all-powerful God. We think great about God. But the problem is you need to get to renew, be, be renewed about what you think about yourself. Yeah. We, we are more negative and more hard on ourselves than anybody else. Do, do you really believe that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Do you really believe, glory to God, that you are one of a kind? Do you really believe that you are the head and not the tail? Do you really believe that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory? Do you believe that God loves you so much that every hair on your head is numbered? Hallelujah. Do you really believe that God loved you so much that he wanted to make you so unique that ain't nobody on this globe got your fingerprint? He made you and broke the mold. Glory to God. Do you really believe? that you can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens you. Do you really believe in yourself? That's the problem. That's the problem. We believe in everybody else. We believe in God. We believe in Steph Curry. We believe in all of these other people. But what do you think about yourself? What have you been saying to yourself? What have you allowed the enemy to say about you? What have you allowed the old man to say about you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You need to stop fighting people and start fighting yourself. Hallelujah. Because of what you done said about yourself. Come on. You remember on the playground, you get mad. Somebody be talking about your mama and ready to fight. You ought to look in the mirror and just fight yourself because of what you've been saying about yourself. You've been calling yourself down. You've been calling yourself not attractive. You've been calling yourself, and you've allowed yourself to get discouraged by what you've been thinking. Oh, my God. Because you know what? You know what I find? If I love myself right, it don't matter what nobody do to me. It, it don't matter what nobody say to me because I know who I am. I, 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 I know so. So therefore, any outside force, any negative force, any negative word cannot disrupt who I am because of what I think of myself. Hallelujah. It don't matter what you think about me. It's what I think about myself. And that's what we be messing up. We sit up there, hallelujah, and get psh, concerned about what other people think. Trying to please me, other people. And most of the time, you really don't even know what they think. But just because you think they think negative about you, you're concerned about what they think. And you want to please them. You want them to like you. You want them to be your friend. You want them to be with you. Hallelujah. But glory to God. Oh, my. Come on. We've been going around that cycle. We've been going around that, mount, that mental cycle. That mental cycle. That mental mountain. And we are dying in our thoughts. We are dying in our thoughts. Hallelujah. Going around this mountain of discouragement, this mountain of negativity, this mountain of fear, this mountain of complacency, this mountain of mediocrity. And, and, and like I said on Sunday, you, you, you get caught in that mountain, man, years start skipping. Even though they went around 38 years, but I promise you to them, it was like nothing. Hallelujah. And, and, and so, you know, even though 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Even though reaching the promised land is not about so much the land of milk and honey or just obtaining a certain status in society or, you know, allowing my bank account. I, I just want to finish. You know, it's, it's about finishing to me. I, I just, I, I don't want to die, hallelujah, with this left in me. I don't want to die, hallelujah, not being content that I gave all I could. I, I, I don't want to die, hallelujah, at least not making an attempt, glory to God, to do what it is or be who it is that God has called me to be. And, and especially when all the wow, hallelujah, it was all because of how I've been thinking, how I've been thinking. So now, 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 now that we're, we're kind of getting the, these principles down uh, and, and we understand the, the importance of thoughts, so now I, I can't afford to allow negative thoughts. I can't afford to allow negative words. Now, I can't stop them from coming to me. But I can't afford to allow them to get to me, to get in me, to, to get in my psyche. Even though I may hear what you say or I even may think a thought, hallelujah, but I can't afford to allow that thought to be pondered on. Because as a man is thinking, so I, I, I got a choice. I got a choice. That's why the Bible says, uh, uh, um, uh, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise in it, think on these things. So we, we have a choice. We, we have a choice that, that even though negativity is around me, even though negativity is being said to me, even though there's negative energy, hallelujah, around me, hallelujah, I still ain't got to think on it. <laughs> Glory to God. I could be surrounded by it and still not think on it. I could be in it, in a negative situation, but I still don't allow to have my mind. Glory to God. So in other words, I could look at a negative situation and still look at that situation and say, God still going to make a way for me. God still going to bless me. God still going to turn me. I'm still blessed. Glory to God. I'm still saved. I still, glory to God. I don't care about no how. And come on, we, we got to see that's why our minds have messed us up. Up. Our thoughts have messed us up to the point that we think, hallelujah, our money, our status, and all of that kind of stuff. You, you got people that got money that's about to lose their mind. Look at Will Smith, just as crazy as a Beelzebub, and got all the money in the world, and sit up here tripping over Jada. And, man, you really, thank you. Hallelujah. I, I, I didn't want to say what I wanted to say, but I wanted to say it. Man, you rich, please. But it's mine. Why? Because his thoughts are not stable. Okay? So, he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Okay, look at that. That you may prove. That you may prove. Now, remember I told you Jeremiah 29 11 said, God said, I know the thoughts that I have toward you, the thoughts of good, good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. So as you renew your mind, as you renew your mind, you begin to prove that which is good. You begin to make proof, glory to God. You, you begin to make manifestation of that which God has thought toward you. Uh, yeah, come on. Every, everything that you have accomplished, glory to God, even though you may have worked to get it, but God thought it before you got it. Ooh, come on now. Hallelujah. Yeah, y'all yeah, yeah, getting that? Even, even though you accomplished good things and you, you made it through school and you accomplished that, everything that you have accomplished, glory to God, God, come on, he, he gives you everything. Hallelujah. All right, now. So now that we see the importance of thoughts, now we have to figure out how, how do I war? How, how do I govern my thoughts? And because and, now you see the essence of the warfare is what's in your mind. It's in your mind. You're, 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 you know, uh, the, the, our marriages are going through what they're going through simply because how we think 
uh, how we've allowed ourselves to think toward each other. Our, our, our relationships with our family is simply because how we've allowed our thoughts to let us think about my relative or think about my child or, or you got you know, kids that don't like their parents and don't want to talk to their parents is simply because how they've been thinking, okay? So the essence of our warfare has been our thought life. And so you got to examine what am I thinking on. So you, you don't necessarily have to examine the thought, okay? You don't have to examine the thought. You got to look at what have I what thoughts have I been thinking, I-N-G, continually pondering on? Because those are the ones that are trying to conform you. Those are the ones, hallelujah, that's trying to make you become. When, when you think on the thought and you get irritated, that means that thought has now penetrated, hallelujah, into your subconscious, and now it's affecting your emotions. It, it's gotten in you, okay? When you feel yourself getting angry, Hallelujah. When you feel yourself, your body getting hot. When you feel yourself, hallelujah, uh, 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 you know, feeling like you're getting ready to cry, feeling like you're getting ready to, you know what I'm saying, just spill over emotionally, that's because, hallelujah, that thought has now gotten to you, okay? So now, hallelujah, we got to learn how to war. We got to war. So go, to, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And let's pick this up in verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. Paul says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And, 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 you know, it's funny, uh, we always associated this scripture to, like, outer warfare. But when you start really dealing with renewing of the mind, you'll begin to see my warfare is within. It's, it's within. So when he's talking about warring after the flesh, he's talking about warring also after your flesh. Not necessarily the person that's getting on your nerves or the person that the devil is using. The warfare is with your flesh. Hallelujah. You, you got to learn how to take the sword and turn it on yourself every now and then. Hallelujah. You, you got to turn it on yourself because that's, the, 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 that's where the real warfare begins. Hallelujah. is within yourself. So even though we walk in this flesh, we, we are constantly in the flesh. We live in the flesh, but we don't war after the flesh. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, so that means they're spiritual. They're spiritual. And here it is. Here, here are the weapons. Okay, but they're mighty through God. Here's the first weapon. Pulling down strongholds. So in other words, the weapons in verse 5, they're, they're, they're mighty. They're mighty through God. Okay, and they're able to pull down strongholds. Okay, what are strongholds? mental thought patterns that have been thought on long enough to establish mindsets. That, that, that is a stronghold, and it could be good or bad. It could be good or bad. Preach, heaven. It could be good or bad, okay? So, so, but we're talking about the bad strongholds. So these weapons that we're getting ready to go on, because I'm going to teach you how to fight, these weapons, hallelujah, they're, they're, they're mighty. They're not carnal. They're not carnal. These are not carnal weapons. Okay, here's the first weapon in verse 5. Casting down imaginations. Weapon number one. To be able to cast down imaginations. Okay, and we think that's something simple. But the whole essence of gaining mental stability and, and mental essence, dominance, hallelujah, is the ability to cast down imaginations. Okay, now first you got to look at what's an imagination. 
is when your mind begins to paint a picture, okay, that is not necessarily true. And you got to think about it. That's when you know that you are thinking on a thought too long is when that thought becomes an imagination. Uh, I mean, because a, a thought can literally start a motion picture in your mind. <laughs> you, it, it'll start with one thought, hallelujah, and, 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 and you know what? Uh, they offended me. And from that one thought of they offended me, you will see yourself grabbing them by the throat, choking them, body slamming them, hallelujah, stomping them in the face, glory to God, and, 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 and dragging them outside and leaving them on the edge of the curb. You just painted a whole movie. And if you're weak, you will begin to follow what that imagination just formed in your head. Un unfortunately, and I say this with all humility and all compassion, is that young man that did that horrific act in Texas, I promise you, he saw it in his head first, probably days before, and pondered on it and planned how he was going to do it. It was all an imagination first before it became an actual act. Even though it was of the devil, but it still was an imagination. So we need to know when your brain or when your mind starts imagining things, one of your weapons against imaginations is simply casting it down. Casting it down. Now, now we're going to stop right there because we're going to really learn how to fight. And because there, there's a lot of different ways to fight. You know, when you're fighting in the natural, come on, you, you, you got some people that put the one leg forward, you know, and they kind of put one leg back and they say, come on, you know what I'm saying? And, and they box it out. And, and uh, some people, uh, they, they do the crouching tiger windmill, you know, and they just be going like this. That, that's one way of fighting. Uh, and, and then you got other people, hallelujah, that may want to kick and may want to bite. And may, uh, you know, I'll be watching these uh, young ladies fighting on YouTube, but it, it, everybody just pull hair. Glory to God, if you got a weave, if you got some braids, uh, that can actually go against you in fighting because your, your enemy can grab your hair and, and pull your hair. It, it, there's all kinds of ways to fight. So when we're talking about casting down imaginations, we need to kind of have a conversation on which way do we cast down imaginations, okay? So we're going to kind of, you know, just kind of have an open dialogue, even those that are online, you guys can kind of, you know, tune in as well. So. I got a thought that has come, and I'm thinking on that thought, and now that thought is beginning to paint a picture or an imagination, okay? Uh, what is one way that I can cast down that imagination? You can change your thoughts, okay? Uh, you can literally say, uh, get thee behind me. Satan, okay, uh, what, is, what is some other stuff that we do? You could pray, uh, you could turn on some worship music, um, you can um, tell the devil I'm not thinking on that, or you could say I'm, I'm changing that channel, you know, so there, there's a lot of different ways to cast it down, but the essence of, of casting down an imagination is whatever you got to do to put a stop, hallelujah, to that imagination producing in your mind uh, and carrying on this image that is not of God. So whatever you got to do to stop it, cast it down, okay? But you need to know every time you do that, that's a weapon. That's a weapon. You have the ability to cast it down, okay? Because when you do that, it does what? It changes the thought. It puts a stop to the thought. It puts a stop to the mind. Okay? So casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Okay? So, so, Alondra, come here. Come here. Come here. Y'all excuse me. Sorry about that. I got my grandbaby with me. Come here. Come sit with Papa.
Okay, can you sit right here with Papa? Okay, my Papa teach. Big girl. Okay, so, so you have the ability to cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Okay, so what is that talking about? The kind of thoughts that go against the word of God. Okay, so you, you have to cast those down. So you got to cast down the imaginations and every thought, and, and that's how you examine whether this is of God, is does it go against the word of God? Okay? If, if, if that imagination is trying to tell you to kill somebody, you know that's exalting itself against the word of God because the Bible says what? Thou shalt not what? Kill. Okay? Uh, that thought is telling you, you know what, you, all, you need to uh, hook up with Susie Q and, you know, do a late night run or whatever. You, you know that's not because God said flee fornication. Okay? So those thoughts, anything that goes against the word of God. Now, th there's also something in that that we got to, you, you, you can't cast down something you don't know. So you got to first know what the word of God says so you'll know whether or not something is coming against it. Yeah. So that's the importance of coming to church and being taught and, and learn the ways of God so you will know exactly what's coming against what? The knowledge of God. Okay? And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. And now, that, that's very important why Paul said every thought. Because some thoughts we think it ain't all that bad. <laughs> that, that is just a friendly thought. But one thing, I, I you know, the Bible says, gird up the loins of your mind, okay? The reason Paul used that word loins is because loins is the male reproductive organ, right? So what, what he's talking about is the reason you got to gird up the loins of your mind. So what he's saying is your thoughts have the ability to reproduce. So that's why you got to bring every thought. Don't, don't think just because it's a little thought, or, or kind of like we say, you know, oh, it's just a little white lie. It's still a lie. It's still a lie. Okay? And, and my grandmother used to tell me, if you lie, you'll steal. <laughs> if you steal, you'll kill. Okay? So in other words, these thoughts have the ability to produce. They, they have the ability to germinate. They have the ability to reproduce. So that's why Paul says, bring every thought. Come on, somebody online, say every thought. Every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. So in other words, I'm going to grab this thought and I'm going to capture this thought and say, no, we're not going to think this way because that's not what God said. So in other words, when that thought comes, I'm going to say, no, hallelujah, I'm not thinking that way. I just grabbed that thought captive and now I'm going to bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. And, and having, look at verse 6, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Okay, so not only are you going to capture these thoughts, nor, not only are you going to um, cast down these imaginations, you also have to have the readiness and the willing to be obedient, glory to God, to what the Word of God says. So it does you no good to cast down imaginations if you're not going to be obedient to what the Word of God says, okay? So, so you have to, so that, that's how we war, and that's how we break that cycle, that cycle of going around that mountain of non-productivity, going around that mountain of depression, going around that mountain, hallelujah, of, of just the same old thing year after year, month after month, week after week. I'm up one minute, down the next. I'm holy one minute, unholy the next. I'm, I'm just, just circling around the mountain. It's, it's because of what you've been thinking. You are where you are because of what you think. And, and so, therefore, it all starts with changing how you think, and maintaining, this is the key, maintaining a consistent 
thought life, a consistent pattern. And, and so, therefore, that's where also the warfare comes in. How many of us have made up our minds to work out? Woo! Hallelujah. I'm about to get it on. I'm about to get thin. And we do good for one week. We do good for two weeks. And have you ever thought about what happened to where I got off? It, it all started with a thought. <laughs> and and what, what, uh, on, on a holiday, what did them thoughts say? <laughs> Do it next week. It's a holiday. I'm about to chill today. And, and so, hey, Alondra, shh. And because of that thought, and because of that thought, whether, and we could say it's of the enemy. We could say that thought is of the enemy. Because what that thought did was, it wasn't a bad thought. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with taking the day off. Ain't nothing wrong with celebrating. Come on, sit with me. There's nothing wrong with celebrating uh, a particular holiday or taking a day off. But the danger was, it wasn't that day off. That was wrong. What happened was it broke a cycle. It broke a pattern. And, 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 you know, and I'm so guilty at this one. One time ain't going to hurt. <laughs> How many of us heard that? But that one, that's one of the biggest lies of the flesh, a biggest lie of the enemy. I don't know what source it came from. It may have came from my old nature of the devil. But that's one of the biggest lies because that one time wasn't about that one time. Because that one time didn't end up being one time, did it? Yeah. Every, everything had a one time. Somebody on crack, they did it one time. Some, somebody, you know, uh, it, it, it all started one time, okay? So, therefore, you got to ask yourself here. Therefore, you got to ask yourself, what, what is throwing me off? What is, what is getting me or, or breaking my pattern? Breaking my pattern of, here. Okay, y'all excuse me, got to get grandbaby situated here. Okay, so we got to ask ourselves, what, what keeps throwing me off? What, what keeps breaking? And, and you know, we got to take that stuff serious because those are the things that have hindered us. Those are the things that have stopped. And, and not only just in the area of working out, it's just in the area of schooling or working or studying or praying or fasting or whatever, it's always that one thought that comes to break cycle, to, to send you back, to hinder you. So therefore, we got to really uh, kind of take this serious because if not, we'll, we'll die going around this mountain. Same old thing, same old thing. And, and this Everybody who has made it to some uh, upper echelon of their craft, uh, whether you see, uh, you know, Stephen Curry or uh, um, whether you see uh, Drew Brees or, or, or one of the professional, they all got there because they were consistent, <laughs> if you think about it, because they practiced, uh, because they had good work patterns. They had a good work ethic, and they were consistent, and they stayed with it, but it all started with a mindset, okay? So I don't know what, what areas that you want to do better in, because this ain't no overnight fix, okay? When you're talking about renewing the mind, that, that word renewing means renovation. So guess what? A renovation is a process, okay? When you're renovating a house, First of all, you got to take out the old stuff. That's a process. 
and then you got to analyze what am I going to put in it new. And then you got to stay consistent. Then you, so renovation is a process. So, so you, you got to start off with small accomplishments and say, you know what, let, let me just start off with doing this better, okay? And because and, all of us got some areas that we kind of been going around the mountain and we're not getting nowhere, okay? And we're not, we're not maximizing our potential. We're not getting to that expected end that God has called us to be. So, so whatever your mountain is, and, and I really believe by the Holy Spirit that, that there was an anointing released on Sunday to break cycles, but now the rest is up to us. Yes, God came in and broke the spiritual cycle, but now the mental cycle has to be changed, and that can only be done by you. As a man is thinking in his heart, so is he. And, and what, what better person deserves to be thought about positively than yourself? God say, I know the thoughts that I have toward you, and they're thoughts of good and not evil. God say, I think good toward you. But what about how you think about yourself? Because that, that is determining your emotions. That is in, in, uh, determining your output. That is determining um, what you accomplish. That is determining whether your task that you have before you is hard or easy or too big. It's all because of how you think about it. And that, that, that's kind of where I, I made up my mind. I said, you know what? I'm not going to allow myself or allow other people to cause me to think different or to think negatively uh, about a situation or about what God has said or what God has told me or what God has called me to do. I know I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. So I pray that this word blessed you on tonight. This is a little detour uh, that the Holy Ghost had me to take on tonight so we can build off that anointing that was released on Sunday because I promise you, if you don't get this tonight, what happened on Sunday is just going to be just a religious experience and you heard a good word and uh, you were encouraged and I enjoyed you. <laughs> and that, that's kind of all you're going to get out of it. But the manifestation has to come with activation. And that activation has to come from you making a conscious effort to change your mind. It's just that simple. It's, it's just, I'm, I'm changing my mind. That, God, if you think about it, Deliverance is simply, I'm changing my mind. Repentance. When Jesus began to preach his message on earth, he said repent. That word repent in the Greek means to change your mind. It's that simple. I know it's hard, but it's still that simple. So you're literally, just like the children of Israel, circled around that mountain for 38 years. They were literally, y'all hear me on Facebook, you hear me YouTube, they were literally two days away from the promise. But they couldn't break that cycle. So what I'm telling somebody on tonight, you are literally one thought away from changing your life. One thought away from changing your destiny. One thought away from becoming that millionaire. One thought away, hallelujah, from, from, from being, glory to God, that entrepreneur. One thought away from coming into that expected end that God has called you to be. I don't know about you, but I just want to finish. I just want to finish everything, everything that God put in me. And I'm determined so I made up in my mind, glory to God. 
I don't care how ugly it is. I don't care how challenging it is. I don't care, glory to God, how, how complex it is. I'm going to think positive. Whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are virtue, whatsoever things, hallelujah, of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, those are the things I'm going to think on. I'm going to ponder on. Yes, negative thoughts are going to come, but I ain't got to think on them. Yes, negative things are going to be said, but I ain't got to think on it. Yes, negative things are going to be done to me. Ugly things are going to be done to me. People are going to talk about me. People are going to hate on me. People are going to do all that. But guess what? I don't have to think on those things. I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to stay in God. I'm going to stay in his word. I'm going to say what God says, not what my situation says. And that's where I'm going to dwell. Hallelujah. So take this word on tonight, people of God, and break the cycle. Come from around that mountain of nowhere. Come from that mountain of just dying, slow deaths of non-productivity, slow deaths, hallelujah, of just cycling in mediocrity, cycling glory to God, hallelujah, L living vicariously through your kids or vicariously through this. Or vi when all the while there's greatness on the inside of you, I don't care if you 70, I don't care if you 80, I don't care what, this is not an age thing. This is about finishing. I'm going to finish, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. And I'm just one thought away from finishing. <laughs> and all I got to do is change my thoughts and stay in those thoughts. Hallelujah. All I got to do is find something positive, find something good, and I'm going to keep my mind on that which is good and that which is God. Hallelujah. That's it. And, and once you begin to practice once you start, hallelujah, uh, 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 being consistent with that kind of thought pattern, guess what's going to happen? Mindsets is going to establish. Strongholds. Because huh? see, some strongholds are good. Oh, so you can have a stronghold of positivity. You can have a stronghold, glory to God, of clarity. You can have a stronghold of faith. You can have a stronghold of prosperity. You can have a stronghold of blessing, glory to God. And it all established because this is how I think. So I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, tonight can be your night. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who's receiving this word on tonight. But the cycle stops now. Come out of that situation. Come, come out of that doubt. Come out of that fear. Come out of that depression. I don't care how, how ugly it looks, your thought. Glory to God and bring you out. So make your decision on tonight. Hallelujah. Bowed heads all over the building, even online. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you right now. Hallelujah for this privilege opportunity, God. Thank you for your word on tonight. Thank you for allowing us to take this detour in Bible study and deal and build, Father God, on what you released on Sunday morning. We receive it and we will walk therein. We will break that cycle of negativity. We will break that cycle of fear. We will break, Father God, those mindsets, Father God, of negativity, those mindsets, Father God, hallelujah, of oppression and depression, Father God, those mindsets of darkness and evil, hallelujah, we break it right now. And those things we choose not to think on. We will put our minds on your word. Hallelujah. We will put our minds on what you said. We will put our minds on what is good. And we thank you because you said we can do all things. Hallelujah. You even said in your word that you will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our mind stayed on you. So we thank you. Thank you for the renewing. Thank you for the renovation. Thank you for making us whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord on tonight. Hallelujah. Thank God, amen, for those that are streaming online with us. Hallelujah. With Facebook and YouTube, we praise you. 
Hallelujah. If you may want to sow on tonight, if this word blessed you on tonight, we want to give you an opportunity to sow on tonight. You could give via Cash App at dollar sign Revelation Ministries. Just look for our logo, hallelujah, through the Cash App. Hallelujah. So we thank you. Thank you for joining in with us on tonight. We thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I pray that this word blessed you. Welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome to your promised land. Welcome. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As you get ready to cross over the great things, we thank you and we will see you on Friday night. On Friday night. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.